Hello and welcome to another week in our garden. It's a lovely sunny day but there's a lot of wind on. It's blowing from the west so if you get a bit of noise on the camera I do apologise. We will try our best not to be out in it too much. Now one of my subscribers has asked me how I keep my hori hori knife sharp. Hori hori in Japanese means dig dig. So it's actually a knife that you can use out in the garden for digging holes etc. It's very very useful when you're planting young plants into the garden. It makes a lovely hole. Now I'll show you how I sharpen it. Here's my knife. Very very old as you can see and well used. Now the there was a serrated edge on it, but that's long worn off. I think it's with the sharpening and the digging, it's completely worn off. It is very sharp at the moment, but I'll show you. There is a, a depth indicators on the back, but they're getting a bit faded now. But now to keep it sharp, all I do, I've got a very, very old file here. It's smooth, really. It's not, not a lot of filing. You couldn't file with it, but you can sharpen this knife with it very good. So all I do is hold the knife, and I just, let me get it right. I just go round, round and round like that. Try and keep the knife always at the same angle. Right? And that's all I do. If you're watching the edge of the knife, you can't really see it on the camera. But if you watch the actual edge of the blade, you'll see it as you rub it, it'll shine. And then, providing you got the angle right, you know that's sharp. So, just like that. Don't take long. Just round there. Like that, all the way to the end, then back, then a couple of strikes off, and um, one up the back that would just take the burrs off the blade. Don't try and sharpen the back because the angle is wrong. And I can show you that is one very, very sharp edge down there now. I'll do the other side. This was the side that used to have the teeth on it, but they've long since worn off now. And, and the the writing is about worn off as well. Let's just do this side for you. Just round and round. If you do it on a regular basis, it doesn't really get blunt anyway. But as I say, if you go putting your plants in the garden with it, you'll have to really sharpen it when you come back. And then that's it. That is very very sharp now another way to do it if you've got an old steel this is one we had in the house all years ago and it got a bit of rust on it so obviously we stopped using it in the house but I keep it in the shed for odd jobs just go round and round and as you go in just roll the steel a bit you see and again if you're watching that edge you know when you're on the edge just a little bit like that and then that's it and then turn it over just strike that off now once a year like all the tools I just rub a bit of lid seed oil on the handle it is actually loosening a little bit now so I might have to tighten those two rivets up or get a new one I think but I'll keep it going it's a good handy knife I've actually used it this morning so it's very very good and it's very good when you're getting something out the garden or for when you're getting like the stalks of the brussels etc if you keep it nice and sharp you can chop it into your compost heap so it helps it rot down very well but that's my hori hori knife in there as you can see the edges are beginning to to go a little bit now but very useful tool that is. Oh, it's always out there with me somewhere. So that's the knife. 
and how to sharpen it. But remember, when you have sharpened it, you've got to be careful with it because, as I said, it does sharpen very, very sharp. Now, I'll just show you the cucumbers. I've potted them up now into round pots. I don't know what size. They're, they're about five inch rounds. And I've put them back into the propagator. I won't take them down to the greenhouse yet for oh, another two or three weeks yet. But I'll show you how they're getting on. There they are. I've potted them up in some compost that I actually warmed in these trays. I warmed the compost up before I potted them. I gave them a good water and warmed them up and then I potted them and then straight back into the propagator. Now every day I just spray them with some tepid water that's kept inside the prop so it's the same temperature and they're coming along well. We had one packet with six plants, six seed. We had one packet with six seeds in it and everyone has taken as you can see. The propagator is quite full. These are just empty trays that I've put in and that will warm that compost ready for setting the seeds in. There's some kohlrabi there, a bit of lettuce, three pots of basil and this is a tray of beetroot as you can see. The other side that is just compost warming. That's the uh, cabbage, that mini coal. I do like that mini coal so I'm going to try one early as well as a late one. These are goji berries that we set last week if you remember. They're just starting to pop through and they've only been in oh three or four days I think so they like it nice and warm. They soon came up. Obviously we switched the light off because there's a fan in it and the colour of the bulb actually affects the camera so we'll switch that on as soon as we finish. Next job is to get these covered back up again. I'm going to put a little bit of dried blood onto the garlic, well around the garlic not onto the garlic obviously and just rake it in. Dried blood is 12% nitrogen. We'll just show you the tub that it came in and then we'll knit down and do it. I've put a little bit in the bottle. There's not a lot of garlic, so we only want what a third of a jam jar. That'll be plenty to put on those to give them. It's just to give them that little bit of a boost after they've been in that cold, wet soil all winter. Now the progress on the fruit has gone very well this week. As you can see, we've got all the wire around the edge. We'll start this next week and we'll a few more buttons to put on and then we'll put the net on the top and then that's ready for the season. This is the garlic that's been there all winter. As you can see it's doing very well but it just needs that little bit of a lift. To, so we'll give it a little bit of nitrogen and that's all it will ever get. What I should do, I should just put it down the centre row and then just rake it in. But I'll just do a little bit to show you. There you go. And then I'll rake it in. Just do this little bit because the wind is, is actually blowing through it. And then just rake it in with a four prong like that. And when you go the other way between the rows, it'll be a nice neat finished bed then. I'll finish that when the wind drops. It's a very cold wind as well. So let's have a put the probe in and see what the temperature is down there, shall we? We'll just put the probe in with the garlic and see what temperature they're living at. Just into the root zone. It's been in my pocket so it was reading 18. We'll just give it a minute or two. We've got a reading of 7 degrees Celsius down there, so it's not too bad. Uh, this one is the onion bed, 
it's reading eight we've done one or two around the garden now and they're all reading between seven and eight there you are look it's dropped to seven now so it's still quite cold down there now this one on the ph is reading low so i don't think the the electric one's very good because i have put plenty of manure in this bed and i've also lined it well so i know that the ph is not low now i've been up and down the garden the temperature of the soil the lowest we got was five high seven so the ground is still very very cold underneath the ph was all over the place but basically low so for peace of mind i think i'm going to do the wet test with the liquids just to be peace of mind now so i won't be able to rest if i, I don't know ph properly just here as you can see and over at the side i brought the squash frame down i store it on in the winter on the roof of the fruit cage so obviously i've had to bring it down this is where i shall site it for this year so it was there so we moved it up one set of beds to here and in the week i'll probably get dying down here with me one day and we'll get this put up it, i'll check it over and if it needs a little bit of paint we'll give it some paint but that will be a job for this week but certainly not in this cold wind we'll knit down to the bottom greenhouse where it's a bit warm now we're in the bottom greenhouse now believe it or not it's 22 degrees in here it's lovely and warm my little fan is circulating the air around nicely for us and um, Diane's helped me get the batch of potting up done so we're caught up, but we're actually having to go again tomorrow just to catch up again. There's, we're running out of space a little bit, but we'll just show you around what we got. Now, at this end, I popped a few sweet peas in this tray. Um, that are a few leaks at this side. You know, they're the pencil leaks that you lift like you do your spring onions and they are white lisp and spring onions in there the rest of the geraniums pelagoniums ivy leaves and fuchsias we've got quite a few potted there's still a few still to do but i will get there these were the gifted onions they're the four trays i'll be keeping and these other trays, there's one, two, three, four. There's five trays also, what's going to Gemma. And believe it or not, looking at them, I was looking at them yesterday and I could see one or two beginning to put a green shoot on. So they've really, uh, they've really jumped doing fine remember it's been very cold so they they're just sat at the moment they'll be putting a bit more root on i think these are the seeded onions quite pleased with them they're doing fine i've looked at one or two and they really are getting the roots down to the bottom now so as soon as i put the roots down then they'll start shooting the tops and hopefully I'll have my frame recovered by then and they'll go into the frame to harden up before they go into the finished bed. They're, they're the cabbages, the brussels and the cauliflower and the calibrese, all doing well. The celery has come out of the propagator and it's been sat in here for a few days so that can be now trayed up. These are helichrys and they're the straw flowers for Diane. I've put them in those cells because they do not like to be transplanted. So we can just pop them out the cell and put them in a pot. The rest are the few more brassicas there. Some peppers doing all right. Tomatoes. These are the tomatoes that will be planted outside. Now these 
long labels that I put in. Because at night I cover everything with fleeces, you can imagine it gets quite cold at night now. And just to protect them, I put fleeces on. So these tall white labels are what holds the fleece off the plants. It just holds the fleece up here out of the way so it doesn't drag on them. Likewise, I put that double perspex at the back to stop the cold really striking them. It's mainly at night, not in the day. A few more a few more peppers there to do. That's yellow bell. And that one is the bull's horn. They still want potting up. Lettuce aren't doing quite so well as I thought, but the the new leaves are coming well, so they'll be all right. These are the leeks below zero. I've just brought those out of the prop. That's why they look a little bit wiry. They'll soon thicken up now. And what I, what I do, I like to leave them in the greenhouse for just a day or two to settle them down before we pop them on. A few more tomatoes there. They're the plum ones. They'll go outside as well. The geraniums that we potted and put up at the top there and the fuchsias all beginning to come back to life now, especially the fuchsias. Look, you can see they're really greening up. They're quite happy up there. I don't overwater them, obviously, and I only water from the bottom so that they'll have to develop roots and go and fetch the water. Now, that'll be it for this week. I hope you've enjoyed it. A bit short, but there's most of the work we're doing is actually in the greenhouse potting on or in our case building that cage for the fruit but once we get those done we'll be able to get on with some more bed work etc the temperature is still a bit too low to be starting to think about planting anything out there they normally say around 10 degrees your soil temperature needs about 10 degrees before you start planting but also to remember that the weather is still very very early so be wary of the weather it could still catch us out with some real nasty frost so that'll be it for this week thank you for watching thank you for subscribing we do appreciate it and hopefully we'll see you next week do take care everyone, bye now.